All right, guys, Sanj here. Welcome back to another episode on the Bodybuilding News Network, specifically another episode of Bodybuilding Today. We're covering the 2021 Texas Pro in the men's open category. So if you're interested in something like that, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, but before we get into it, I want to thank the uh, the sponsor for the coverage of the Texas Pro, PeakPerformanceLabs.ca. If you guys are shopping for supplementation and you want to support this channel, you can use code Sanj10 at checkout. But let's get back into the video. So when we're looking at this lineup, uh, there isn't going to be um, there. How do I want to say it? There could be some crazy surprises here. Okay. So let's just go ahead and start off. Uh, we have Steve Kuklo, Ian Valier, uh, Mohamed El Amam, uh, Phil Klahar. We have uh, something that I know a lot of you guys are going to be happy with. Martin Fitzwater has made it into the first call out. And then also Hassan Mustafa. Now the, the projected top three is going to be a battle between Steve Kuklo, Eden Valier, and Phil Klahar. Uh, we'll dig into that a little bit more when they do their individual uh, comparisons, the top three and the top four comparisons. Um, but I wanted to focus on Hassan Mustafa. I thought he looked absolutely fantastic. Probably one of the uh, the best versions we've seen of Hassan Mustafa in this competitive season. Uh, I thought that from the back, he's just uh, lights out one of the best. Uh, I think he wins most of the back shots. I think even now, right now, he wins most of these side shots, although the camera is not favorable to him right now. Uh, when we're looking at um, Mohamed El Amam, I thought he looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think I wrote down that he looked a little soft from the back. Uh, yeah, it's just a little soft from the back. And then I thought that his midsection was a little washed out, but from the back, I mean, world-class physique. Uh, and then even, um, well, from the back, besides some of the conditioning uh, in that lower back and in the hamstrings, uh, from the front, world-class, amazing bicep peaks. When we're looking at Martin Fitzwater all the way on the right in the black trunks, I thought he looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, I thought that he was going to get outsized by some of the competitors. And and for the most part, I feel like he is on uh, most of the uh, the competitors on stage. But the way that his physique flows and just how everything is just perfectly proportioned, uh, I feel like he's going to do well at the show. He's going to do well in the men's open bodybuilding moving forward. Uh, just such a beautiful flow to his physique. I was very excited to see him uh, come in proper like he did. Now let's give uh, let's give a little attention to Steve Kuklo, Ian Valier, and Phil Klahar. Now Steve Kuklo, I don't think this is the best uh, version that we've seen from him. Although he looks fantastic, uh, the conditioning was on point uh, for the most part. Uh, if he wins, I'm not going to be crazy surprised. Uh, but then also, I think Ian Valier is pushing him very hard for that second, maybe third spot here. Uh, Ian looks probably, in my opinion, better than he did in Tampa. So uh, if the judges want to see it that way, and, and I haven't seen the photos yet, so uh, there's only so much I can say. Um, but we'll, I guess we'll dig into Phil Klahar, uh in just a little bit once the uh, the pre or once they bring them back out for that top four. Uh, it's going to be a solid comparison between these four. Now uh, they're bringing these three. I thought that they brought two more on stage, but uh, this is going to be for that fourth, fifth, and sixth spot. Um, they, I'm thinking the way that the judges were thinking is that they they wanted to get a better comparison um, with Martin Fitzwater, with Mohamed El Amam, and then Hassan Mustafa uh, from right to left. And like I said a little bit earlier, I thought that Hassan Mustafa won, uh, wins most of these shots, uh, especially from the side here. It's just such a monster shot for him in, uh, from him. When we're looking at these back shots, uh, a lot of people were critiquing Hassan Mustafa's glutes in Tampa, or not in Tampa, uh, I think it was Chicago. Uh, I thought that they looked a lot sharper. They looked um, less droopy in this show. Uh, so I loved what it was. I was seeing from Hassan Mustafa. Uh, Mohammed or uh, Mohammed El Amam, uh, like I said, kind of in that lower back, it just looks a little washed out. Where uh, maybe if it was just a little more crisp, you could see a little bit more of the feathering. Uh, and then once they move uh, Martin Fitzwater in the middle, I know he's excited uh, to get in that center spot. Uh, just a better comparison for him next to a, a much larger Hassan Mustafa. Uh, and this really is like a battle of the giants. When you look at just the pure mass of Hassan Mustafa versus the more classic aesthetic uh, version of, uh, of Martin Fitzwater in the men's open, 
I think he compares very well. Uh, he's not really losing too much uh, when we're looking at the structure, although Hassan has much more muscle. Uh, if you're not able to present the muscle as um, effectively or e as efficiently as you can, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt your placings. And as they bring out the top three, we'll talk about the second call out. So don't worry, we will uh, we'll we'll cover those gentlemen uh, in due time, giving them their respect that they have earned. Uh, but as they start comparing the top three projected, uh, as we conclude prejudging, I cannot um, I cannot put aside my bias. Now I love Phil Klahar. This guy is so impressive. The conditioning from this front double, uh, I don't see anyone beating him except maybe Steve when we're looking at the chest development. Uh, but the separation in the midsection, Phil Klahar was a little washy in those lower abs uh, from the front double, at least, uh, at Tampa. He made that correction at, at Texas here. And I feel like, if I'm being honest with myself, uh, the only shots that Phil Klahar might lose is these side shots right here. Everything else I feel like is a very close one-two uh, against Steve Kuklo. Um, so the way I'm calling it right now is, oh, man. I'm going to put it Phil and Steve for one and two and Ian to third. Uh, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Let's start with this back double. What do you see here in this back double? I see Phil. I feel just a huge, massive 3D conditioned uh, upper back, lower back, the Christmas. You can see a Christmas tree in his back double. The hamstrings, the glutes, the, uh, the cross feathering in the glutes, the striations in the hamstrings. It's not even comparable to the other two, which are considerably more, uh, I don't want to say washed out, but it's just, they're not as conditioned as Phil Klahar. Uh, and structurally, I feel like uh, Steve Kuklo isn't really beating out Phil Klahar in a lot of these shots. Uh, Ian Valier, although he has a, a lot of favorable shots, especially on these side ones, um, I just feel like Phil has what it takes to win this show. Uh, Steve, Ian, they look very good. Uh, in some shots and then not as great in the others. But uh, if I'm being honest with myself, my eyes just keep going back to Phil Klahar. But um, I mean, honestly, guys, let me know in the comment sections below, is there something that you guys are seeing that I'm not? Um, is there a reason why Steve is always in that center spot? Uh, do you think it's because he just has much more, uh, a lot more mass? Do you think it's because he has better con conditioning than the other competitors. Um, I don't know if I could go with the conditioning conversation. Uh, although Ian does look good, I just don't think he has um, the conditioning to beat out uh, Phil's conditioning. Structurally, it's, uh, it's kind of a tough one. Uh, we're going to skip ahead. We have Ian in the middle here, uh, but I want to skip ahead to where they have uh, Phil in the middle just because it's just so much more exciting. Um, and it's no dis disrespect to Ian. Uh, it's just something that I like to see. Now, looking where they put Phil in the middle. Now, this just completely amps up the competition. Everyone gets a little bit more excited uh, once Phil's in the center here. Uh, and we can really see, like, is there anything that Phil's missing compared to Steve? Um, I feel like it's a, it's a Phil versus Steve here. Ian, especially in the front double, it's just really not his shot. He doesn't really show it much. Uh, you'll notice that whenever we do the comparisons, uh, he never has that shot as his featured shot. But the front and lat, I feel like, is a very close shot between Phil and Steve Kuklo. Now, I have said before, with these side shots, uh, I feel like Phil Kohar loses out on these. I think that he knows that when you're looking at the hamstring drop. Uh, so that's why he usually transitions out of it to a, a more modified front shot. Um, but upper body, I don't think he's losing anything. He has the mass. He has definitely has the conditioning. From the back, I don't think that there's any conversation. Uh, so uh, the, the, the um, what do you call it? The MC, he called a lat spread, but everybody else is like, no, usually the front double goes, or the back double goes first. So that's the confusion there. But I don't think that Phil Kohar is losing out on any of the size here in these back shots. Um, the size that he was losing in the hamstrings from the side are um, corrected here. The conditioning, I feel like, outweighs the mass. Steve and Ian have bigger legs from the back, uh, but fills are more conditioned. So you're able to see a, a much more aesthetic package. Uh, it's just, 
maybe it's an apples and oranges. I don't know. Uh, but like I've said a couple times now, my eyes consistently go back to Phil Klahar in the center for that first place uh, call out. But then again, I think that Steve Kuklo is very, very close. Uh, so as we start to conclude the prejudging for the men's open, uh, I would have to put it Phil Klahar one, Steve Kuklo two, and Ian Valier three. Uh, and then also real quick before the video ends, I thought it was really cool that they did a pose down. They brought everybody out for a pose down right at the end of this. Um, so if you watch the live stream, I know you saw it. It was such a cool thing to see in pre-judging. Uh, but let me know. Let me know in the comment sections below how you guys are feeling about the uh, placings coming into the finals for the 2021 Texas Pro in the men's open category or the men's open class. I'm not sure if I want to call it class or category. What do you guys call it? Do you call it the men's open class or men's open category? Let me know down below. And also let me know about the placings. Where do you guys think uh, people are placing? Do you think anyone was overlooked? How excited are you to see a very conditioned and improved version of Hassan Mustafa? And do you think Phil Kalhar can win the Texas Pro? My name's Sanj. Thank you so much for watching. I'm your host, and I'll see you guys in the next one.